the behavior of metals in the presence of magnetic field the behavior of metals in the presence of magnetic field can be divided into two types that is metals let us write like this right metals in the presence of magnetic field they can behave in two types only two is right either they can attract or align themselves align in the direction of magnetic field in the direction of magnetic field or they will repel right only two possibilities are there right for attraction what may be the reason uh, the reason so the presence of unpaired electrons unpaired electrons if it is present sir uh, that will get aligned the direction of the magnetic field so that property is called para magnetism para magnetism the things which are exhibiting the para magnetism are called para magnetic right para magnetic so when there is unpaired electrons that behaves like para magnetic that will align themselves to the direction of the magnetic field. this we can remember easily there is a word in hindi the word in hindi called para Piara, Piara means lovable, right? Love. So Piara, Piara, the next Piara magnetic. Piara, Piara relates to this attraction, right? Piara relates to this attraction, right? So that Piara magnetic of it means it will attract or it will align themselves to the direction of magnetic. And for repulsion, we call it as Daya, Daya magnetic. Right. So these are the two types of magnetic moments or magnetism that can be exhibited by metals. Either para magnetic or dia magnetic. Para magnetic in the sense it it will align themselves in the direction of the magnetic field. Dia magnetic in the sense that it will repel the magnetic field. Right. Then who decides? Dia para. Right. Or para dia. Para means unpaired electrons. Unpaired electrons. Dia means absence of unpaired electrons. Right. So if there is unpaired electron in the compound that 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 will attract that will get attracted to the magnetic field. There is no unpaired electrons that that will repel the magnetic field. Right. Let us go for 3D series. That is scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese. iron cobalt nickel copper cu copper copper and zinc so let us read the atomic number this is 21 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 30 right so let us write the uh, number of unpaired electrons here right So listen here. A R and 4s2 is common for all these things. So let me write the D configuration here. This is D1. There is 3D. Right? D1, D2, D3. In the case, this is D5, 4s1. Right? In the case, this is D5, 4s2. And here again, D6, D7, D8. Here D10 for us one yes. So these are the electronic configuration of D block elements. Let us draw the number of unpaired electrons here. Right? For scandium, for scandium, the number of unpaired electrons is one. For vanadium. Titanium number of unpaired electrons is two, and for vanadium it is three, and for uh, chromium it is five plus one, right? Five plus one. Remember here, five electrons are here and five one electron here. Six, and for uh, manganese 
it is 5 electrons and for uh, iron it is 6 electrons and d orbital in the sense we have to remember that is 1, 2, 3, 4 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons so the number of unpaired electron is 4 here so like that if you go for uh, cobalt that is 7 d7 doesn't 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 5 electrons 6 electrons 7 electrons so the number of unpaired electrons is 3 right so like that and uh, nickel one more electron will be added so the number of unpaired electron is 2 and in copper the number of unpaired electrons 3d has been completely filled right and only one electron and four is orbital so copper the unpaired electron is one and zinc it is not in account so we can relate here listen here the vanadium and cobalt has three electrons and titanium and nickel has two electrons and scandium and copper has one electron okay now how we are going to relate the number of electrons to the magnetic moment right so the magnetic moment mu is calculated using the formula mu is equal to root of n into n plus 2 right mu is equal to root of n into n plus 2 so where n is equal to number of unpaired electrons number of unpaired electrons so for scandium that is root of 1 into 1 plus 2 root of 1 into 1 plus 2 for scandium is that is equal to root 3 so the value of root 3 is 1.73 and for uh, titanium the number of unpaired electrons is 2 so root of 2 into 2 plus 2 2 into 2 plus 2 that is equal to root 6 root 6 is equal to 2.44 and vanadium vanadium number of unpaired electrons is 3 so 3 into 3 plus 2 n plus 2 no? 3 plus 2 so that is equal to root of 15 root of 15 is nothing but 3.87 and chromium the number of unpaired electrons is 6 remember chromium the number of unpaired electrons is 6 so root of 6 into 6 plus 2 that is equal to root of 48 and the value will be 6.92 and for manganese the number of unpaired electron is 5 that is equal to root of 5 into 5 plus 2 that is equal to root of 35 which is equal to 5.91 and iron the number of unpaired electrons is 4 so root of 4 into 4 plus 2 that is equal to root of 24 that is equal to 4.89 I try to write here now that is 4.89 then cobalt cobalt the number of electron is 3 cobalt the number of electron is 3 the number of unpaired electron is 2 so root of 2 into 2 plus 2 so that is similar to this is vanadium that is similar to titanium right cobalt is nothing but vanadium nickel that is equal to titanium right now we can find a similarity here now we can find a similarity here listen here the number of unpaired electron is 1 here so the magnetic moment value will be 1 point something right 1 point something if the number of electron, unpaired electron is 2, the value is 2 point something. 
Number of unpaid electrons is 3. The value is 3 point something. Number of unpaid electrons is 6. The value is 6 point something. Number of unpaid electrons is 5. The value is 5 point something. And number of electron, unpaid electrons is 4. The value is 4 point something. So that goes on. So we directly relate the number of unpaired electrons. Number of unpaired electrons. That is equal to the number of unpaired electrons x point decimal that is the magnetic moment value so that is the magnetic moment value right so we not to worry about this decimal but this is perfect right so by this way we can identify the magnetic moment in object equations mu is equal to dash for ni2 plus right so ni2 plus means we have to find out the number of unpaired electrons that number of unpaired electrons for example number of unpaired ni2 plus let us work it out so, nickel, the number of unpaired electron is here, 2. Right, Ni2 plus means it has given the number of unpaired electron. So, unpaired electrons will be 0. So, there will be mu is equal to 0 here. Ni, let us come from there. Ni, the atomic number is 28. So, 28 means it is 3D8 configuration. 3D8 configuration means it should be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, these two electrons have been given out. So, that Ni2 plus the mu is the magnetic moment is 0. So, by this way, we can find out easily. Right? So, this is all about the magnetic moment. Color of the compounds. The color of the compounds, which will decide the color of the compound. Right? The color of the compounds has been, has been decided by the number of unpaired electrons. Number of unpaired electrons. So, usually unpaired electrons decides the color and the number decides the intensity. How it should be, right? So, the transition metal compounds are colored due to the presence of unpaired n minus 1 d orbital unpaired n minus 1 d orbital right let us take in the case of scandium the number of unpaired electrons is 1 right and vanadium the number of unpaired electrons is 3 right these unpaired electrons decides the color of the compound right these are the reason for the color of the compound, right? And the, the color is caused due to DD transition. Mark it out. This is caused due to DD transition. So, what is DD transition? I'll tell you. Now, so you are clear about color in the sense you have to remember about the number of unpaired electrons or the unpaired electrons and how the unpaired electron causes the color. Let us have a closer look here. So, uh, for example, let us take scandium here. Scandium, there is one electron on the d orbital, right? Only one electron on the d orbital. What happens when another element approaches with electron for bonding? This d orbital splits down into two. This d orbital splits down into two. So, look here. This splits down into two parts. This three in one part and this two in one part. So this is dxy and dxz, dxz and dyz, dx square minus y square and this is dz square. Right. So, this splits in such a way by the arrival of elements, <laughs> arrival of species with electron. So, this state is called in which all the phi orbitals are equal in energy. All the phi orbitals are equal in energy. That state is called degenerate state. Degenerate. Degenerate. Degeneracy means equal in energy. Right? This is called degenerate state. So, the degenerate state got splits up. What happens? Splits up into two. So, this is called T2G and this is called EG. EG means we can understand doubly degenerate. 
doubly degenerate. Two, two orbitals doubly degenerate. This is triply degenerate. This is triply degenerate. Triply degenerate. So three orbitals, right? So when the d orbital of scandium has been split down, so this one electron should goes to the lower level here. Yes, and these things are empty. When this electron absorbs certain amount of energy, what happens? This moves up to the higher energy level, and after some time, it comes back to its lower energy level by emitting such a photon, which it is absorbed, energy which is absorbed. If that uh, the wavelength lambda of such photon falls in VR region, that gives a color. That gives a color. VR means visible region. This is a spectrum. In the visible region of the spectrum, that gives a color. Also. Simply, we can remember when it falls down, when it comes back to excited state to ground state, it uh, emits the energy absorbed and thereby causing color. Okay? Let me explain in detail one more time. Yes. In the isolated atom or ion, the five d orbitals are divided into two categories eg and t2g with the different energies right so this is dxy this is dxz this is dyz dx square minus y square and dz square right so these are degenerate here but when the ligand approaches with the electron it gets split into two levels one is this part is the T2G part that is triply degenerate and this part is the EG part that is doubly degenerate. When an electron goes from triply degenerate part to doubly degenerate part, so this is also D orbital, this is also D orbital. The transition of electrons occurs from D to D. That is why it is called as DD transition. DD transition. And due to this transition only, colors are caused. Right? When it comes back to its original position, it emits the radiation and that radiation falls on the VR region of the spectrum. This is a spectrum. Right? This is a spectrum. And this is the VR region, visible region. If the lambda, that is a wavelength of the radiation emitted, falls on the VR region, it gives its color. Right? That is why the D orbitals, the elements in D orbital having the colored compounds. Got it? So, remember again, color. You have to remember unpaired electrons. Color means unpaired electrons. And that is how unpaired electrons cause that is due to DD transition. That is due to DD transition. Right. And let us have some examples here. The color depends upon the presence of unpaired electrons and the nature of the ligand and geometry of the complex. Nature of the ligand. Ligand in the cell size that is species approaching with electron that is a ligand species which approaches with electron for bonding right so due to the species only the d orbitals get splitted right when it approaches only what happens this gets splitted into eg and t2g level right and geometry of the complex geometry means structure let us take K4, Fe, Cn6. There is a simple compound. Right? Here, the structure will be octahedral. Let, let us uh, see in detail in the coordination compounds lesson. Just have an idea. Octahedral. So, this structure also decides the color. So, what are the three points? One is number of unpaired electrons we know. And second one is the nature of ligand. Nature of ligand, there are two types of ligand, strong ligand and weak ligand. This is enough for, uh, for right now, in coordination almost we will see in detail. So, strong ligand, based on the nature of the ligands and the geometry, geometry means structure of the complex. These three decides the color of the compound, right? Is that clear? Yes. So, listen here, these are the different colors. That is VO2 plus gives yellow color, CrO42 minus gives 
deep yellow color and M1O4, KM1O4 gives purple color and K2Cr2O or potassium dichromate or dichromate will give orange color. So these are the examples of colors. The next part we have to see is alloys. Alloys. It's nothing but the homogeneous mixture of metals. Homogeneous. Homogeneous mixture of metals. Alloys we know very well. Alloys are used in coins, wheels of two wheeler, right? Previously we have the spokes wheel. Now we are having that alloy wheels due to to, en to enhance the strength, to enhance strength, right? Alloy is generally I'll compare to hybrid plant. Hybrid plant in the sense that is one plant, only one plant will give different types of flowers, different colors of flowers and fruits. That is, we have taken the character from different uh, species and we had put it in one. Right. Like that the alloy mix, whatever the character we need, it should be strong, as well as tensile, as well as lightweight. So, like this, the properties which we, re which we require, we will put it in the same thing we will uh, mix it in the same thing so that we call it as an alloy brass is an alloy we know brass brass is an alloy used for coin making this is an alloy of copper and zinc right when copper mixed together it gives a golden color uh, alloy called the brass and bronze gold is silver bronze so this is a bronze metal and the bronze is made up of copper plus tin copper plus tin so these are the bronze and gunmetal or bell metal. It's nothing but copper plus zinc plus tin. So strongest in gunmetal or bell metal. And the stainless steel, yes, is what we are using in our kitchen. So that is made up of iron plus chromium plus nickel. These are the main ingredients. And carbon is added to enhance the strength. To enhance the strength. Yes. Copper, zinc, and tin for gunmetal, stainless steel. These are things to enhance the strength. So that's the end of the session. And if you have any doubts, please come up.